Hello and welcome to your weekly five minutes of intercourse with Dr. Don. Because we all need to talk at least a little about sex. I wish for fame, fortune, and love. Sorry I can't quite help you with those first two wishes, but I think I can help you with that third wish. Of the endless number of human sexuality topics we'll be covering on 5MI, the topic of love seems a perfect starting place. Whether you admit to it or not, we all need love, we all want love, and in the immortal words of Cheap Trick, we all love to be loved. So let's officially begin 5MI by granting you that third wish. The ability to make anyone fall in love with you. Poof. To grant your wish, we must learn three things about love. The first thing is how love is related to the sympathetic nervous system, which is a fancy way of saying love is inside you. The second thing is how love is related to classical conditioning, which is a fancy way of saying love surrounds you. And the third thing is how love is related to excitation transfer, which is a fancy way of saying love often fools you. Hmm, this seems like a lot to learn during our first week of intercourse with one another. How about we learn these three things over the next three weeks? This week, we'll focus on how love is inside you by describing the sympathetic nervous system. Next week, we'll focus on how love surrounds you by describing classical conditioning. And the week after next, we'll combine these two types of love with excitation transfer to make anyone fall in love with you. Before we make others fall in love with you, let me ask whether you've fallen in love before. To be clear, I'm not asking whether you've been in a loving relationship before. That's a question for another day. What I'm asking is whether you've fallen in love before. This isn't a requirement for you to make anybody fall in love with you. However, if you haven't fallen in love yet, I highly recommend you add it to your life's bucket list. It's a fascinating Aww. experience. If you've had this experience before, I want you to think about how you knew you were falling in love. How would you describe it? Specifically, what was going on with your body to confirm to you you were falling in love? Ironically, people typically describe falling in love as being stressful. Saying things like, I get so nervous when I'm around her. I can't stop gazing into his beautiful eyes. My mouth is so dry I can barely speak to her. He makes me have butterflies in my stomach. Behavioral neuroscientists have a bit of a different take on their descriptions of falling in love. They say it causes stupidity and mimics the effects of being high on cocaine. Based upon your experiences or lack thereof, whose perspectives do you think are closer to the truth when it comes to describing falling in love? People's perspectives of it being stressful or scientists' perspectives of it making us stupid and acting like we're on drugs? Drum roll, please. And the correct answer to this question is a combination of these perspectives. Let's call this combination of perspectives the stressful, stupid cocaine perspective. I believe we've just developed a new theory on falling in love. The stressful, stupid cocaine perspective on falling in love isn't as silly as it may first sound as being. It's actually rooted within the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. We're basically composed of nervous systems, with the two primary nervous systems being the central and peripheral nervous systems. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and spinal cord, 
It's the thinking part of us, while the peripheral nervous system is made up of the somatic and autonomic nervous systems. Without us having to think, the somatic and autonomic nervous systems control our basic body functions, muscles, and senses. The autonomic nervous system has two branches, the parasympathetic and sympathetic. The parasympathetic branch calms us, whereas the sympathetic branch, often referred within textbooks as the fight or flight nervous system, is all about our personal survival. It immediately, automatically, and physiologically reacts to environmental stressors. Before I go on, I feel like I need to let you in on a little secret that only us neuroscientists know about. If you promise to keep this secret, I'll share it with you. Pinky promise? The fight or flight nickname doesn't capture what the sympathetic nervous system is really doing. Indeed, the sympathetic nervous system does react to negative environmental stressors associated with fighting or flighting, but it also reacts to positive environmental stressors associated with eating and sex. So the sympathetic nervous system shouldn't be narrowly nicknamed the fight or flight nervous system. Instead, to be accurate, it should be nicknamed the fight flight, feed, or f nervous system. Folks, we here at 5 of My Weekly are terribly sorry for such foul and unprofessional language from Dr. Don. While he gets his mouth washed out with soap, let me share with you an interesting fact about the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is incapable of determining what type of environmental stressors it's reacting to. It physiologically reacts in the same fashion, whether it's involved in road rage, a lion is chasing it, it's craving a Whopper with cheese, or a lover is embracing it. It takes the central nervous system, specifically the brain, to determine whether the stressor is related to fighting, flighting, feeding, or sex. That's what I get for sharing a secret, I guess. As a matter of compromise, how about I just refer to the sympathetic nervous system as a sympathetic nervous system? The stressful part of the stressful, stupid cocaine perspective on falling in love is simply a series of sympathetic nervous system reactions. I get so nervous when I'm around her, comes from the sympathetic nervous system accelerating heart rates. I can't stop gazing into his beautiful eyes, comes from the sympathetic nervous system dilating the pupils. My mouth is so dry, I can barely speak to her, comes from the sympathetic nervous system inhibiting flows of saliva. He makes me have butterflies in my stomach comes from the sympathetic nervous system inhibiting stomach motility. Now, I'm sure you've never done anything like this before when falling in love. But maybe one of your friends has. They start making some really dumb decisions, like not hanging out with you or their other friends anymore. And they begin saying some really irrational things. I love everything about him. She's perfect. We have no differences at all. The stupid part of the stressful, stupid cocaine perspective on falling in love comes from the sympathetic nervous system decreasing blood flow to specific areas of your brain, like the frontal and prefrontal cortices. Less blood flow to these areas of your brain means less oxygen. Less oxygen means less activity, and less cortical activity means decreases in the ability to think logically and make rational decisions. The cocaine part of the stressful, stupid cocaine perspective on falling in love comes from the sympathetic nervous system secreting dopamine. Like falling in love, cocaine increases dopamine levels. 
Dopamine is one of the brain's basic neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters allow the brain's more than 100 billion cells to communicate with one another. Increasing the number of dopamine neurotransmitters causes a mixture of emotions, including agitation, anxiety, feelings of pleasure, high energy, paranoia, jealousy, and high libido. Dopamine isn't the only neurotransmitter whose production is increased while falling in love. Others include serotonin, oxytocin, and neuroepinephrine. But we'll save our discussions about these neurotransmitters for another day. My time is almost up this week, about five minutes ago. But I think we've achieved our goal of demonstrating your nervous systems in general and your sympathetic nervous system in particular are built to allow you to fall in love. Consider yourself one step closer to achieving the ability to make anyone fall in love with you. Let me end this week's intercourse with a promise and a question. Despite possessing this potential of falling in love, us humans still have to learn how to love ourselves and others. Sadly, not all of us learn this. I promise next week to show you the learning processes involved in loving ourselves and others. But before I do that, let me ask you a question. What's in control of your love? You or the environment? Thanks for watching. If you could rate this video, I'd appreciate it. Like us on Facebook at 5MI Weekly and follow us on Twitter. If you have suggestions about intercourse topics, then leave your ideas in the comment section or send those suggestions on Twitter to at 5MI underscore weekly using the hashtag 5MI topics. If I use your ideas for an intercourse, then I promise I'll be sending you a free copy of Being, my book on happiness.